as Evan said, we are about to start a new series entitled The Big Hope Lord God. And today I get the pleasure of speaking on our loving God. And we will be using Romans 5, verses 6 to 8 to do so. Uh, from that Bible, so if you wish from the phone, I will read it and I will refer to it as we go. So this is Romans 5, verses 6 to 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, but for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let's question for you before we move on. Can you keep a promise? Can, can you keep a promise? You try. It's a tough one. Can you keep a promise? In our house, having grown up with two young girls in the house, the amount of times I've been asked, can we do this? And you go, maybe. And you go, we promise. And I don't like saying yes to a promise because I don't want to let them down. But promises are so important. In the day I saw on um, that type of thing, social media, a uh, clip of people, do you know these trust forms where you have people behind you and you can stand there and you've got a trust form? But if you fall backwards, they can catch you. And this guy's standing there and he said, if you, you stand there, what we'll do is we're going to catch one, two, three, and you fall and we promise we'll catch you. Behind him, one, two, three, and they brace themselves and he falls forward. It's coming down his face. Well, some of you might remember the cartoon Charlie Brown. Remember Charlie Brown and his friend Lucy, who always said to him, Go on, I'll hold the ball, I'll hold the American football for you. You kick it. I promise I won't do it. And Charlie Brown would look at her and every single time. Until that promise was real, he would run up and go to keep the ball, which he knew at just the last minute they fall flat. But promises are important, aren't they? We make them daily, whether we realise it or not, consciously and subconsciously. Some of us make really serious ones, like wedding vows. Others less serious. I promise you, only your colleagues can't be left, left in the fridge. And sadly, many of us break them too. Whether we mean to or not, whether we miss something, miss a meeting, but when you promise to do something, let the kids say. I wonder whether the word promise I mean, it means as much today as maybe it did in Bible times. Or is it becoming a case of they're just words? On Thursday, apparently, something happened in this country. I don't know if you've all remembered. The country will go into various buildings around the country, stand in a little wooden store, and put their mark on a piece of paper. Or something. Voting for a party to lead our country for the coming years. And what's the basic? And if anybody's been listening to anything that they've said over the last few weeks, I'm not going to ask you if you believe anything that they've said over the last few weeks, but it's all based on promises, isn't it? I won't increase tax. I'm going to do the play already. I'm just pretending to be them. I won't increase tax. We will reduce immigration. We will improve the NHS waiting lists. We will mend the education system. And on and on and on. Powerful men and women on our TV screens, on our radios, on the newspapers, on the internet, everywhere, all bidding for our lives, for our trust in making promises. They spent the last two weeks, in my last few weeks, in my opinion, doing two things. One, making promises on how they would improve our lives, 
our systems and our country. And the other thing they've been doing is telling us how they're all lying about the promises they've been making. On Friday, our country will be led by a party. Will it be led by a party with the best policies, the best plans, the best politicians? Or will we look back in the time to come and go? All of those promises that we made, most of them were broken. Don't worry, that's the end of the political statement. It's just an introduction to what I want us to think about. I want us to think about promises. We're really the one person. We make promises and we have them that are broken. Wherever we go, we make promises on a daily basis. Eat this and get thin. Download this dating app and meet your soulmates. Buy this car and be the envy of all your friends. Every moment we promise that things will be better. If you do, I can tell you. Then we look at that communication cautious man. Paul communicated with the church in Rome, but he's reminding them of the promise that Jesus made. And we need to remember that, that that promise and all of Jesus' promises mean just as much now 2,000 years ago as they did. I'm not sure I would stand by the promises made by our leaders today. I don't expect too much to change in the coming years, to be honest, whoever becomes the new government. But I'm happy to stand by the promises made by Jesus. I'm happy to stand here in front of you, be recorded, be on the internet, and say that I trust in what Paul was saying. If you see the sort of face that way. I want to look at the verses we've just heard and to help us to consider that actual words. I think the passages from Romans are just fabulous. I think they sum up really the whole gospel. And it's only a very, very small passage, but really, everything from Genesis to Revelation could actually be squeezed into those few words. It talks about hope and the power of hope. It talks about life and the power of life. And it talks about the power of eternity. I just think the whole thing is fascinating. Let's read it one more time before we start. You see it back just at the right time when there was still powerless. Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely would anyone die for an unrighteous person. But for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this world. We were still sinners. Christ died for us. But God demonstrates this to us. One who is still saying is Christ. What would you do for those who are in the world? Would you die for your friends, for your family? Or would you say, I'm not sure I've done promises to my kids in case I have them now? Or would you not be standing in the world? Sometimes in this world, the, the word love has become something very overused. I don't mean between husbands and wives and families, I mean just all the other things. 
Men det er bare ikke fint, at jeg synes, at vi er så bare på en måde, at det er sådan, 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 is sacrificial. To sacrifice oneself for someone else. That kind of thing needs to be done. It needs to be acted out. And then the part I think people make promises to me, oh I'll definitely do that and it won't happen again or anything like that. Something physically got to happen, it got to be an action. It couldn't just be words. Your actions will follow what you have. If you love to start doing it, you'll follow it through thick and thin. If you love fishing, you'll go around the day you train it as well as in the day it's summer. If you love Chinese food, you'll go to the restaurant 30 miles away and it's the food you need. It's a sacrifice, it's an action in God. But what can you love? It's a type of sacrifice in the things. Because we must demonstrate that we are actions. If we love money, maybe we sacrifice our life and our family to get it. If we love sports, sometimes we sacrifice the time and energy to enjoy it. Accepting our own hearts, we need to recognize that actually we are still sinners. We are still daily getting one. If you're not, you should be a good person. I know I'm a sinner, and I should be sitting back there. But I know I love the girl who loves me. You showed that sacrifice of dying on the cross for me. And we need to accept that love. Daily. And if you are one more in a place at this point where you're not sure, that's that. And I'd love to pray for you now. Because you can talk to me now, you can talk to me now. Um, because we'd love to pray for you. Because God does love me. Jesus came on that cross, not just the big one off, but the story. He did it. Because he loves us. And if we know that, because we've got to do something with God, we can't just sit there, we can't just sit back and allow that to just so pray for us and go, that's the love for you. Because God calls us into partnership with Him. He calls us to spread that joy, to spread that message, to spread that promise with others. So as we accept in our hearts that He has died for us, that promise, that He will go to a place, He'll be death, and He will go to heaven to prepare a place for us. It's not just for us. We can't just keep it in here. We're in here. We've got to go out there and share it with others. Well, I've been away, so you know I'm going to spend on sabbatical. This is officially my last day of sabbatical. I go back to work tomorrow. And it's difficult working with somebody if you want to marry into it means you can't completely disappear. So, I'm doing my wife have this thing about work. We won't talk about what happens at work for the next six weeks. Well, I'm just going to work that day well. 
So we've been sharing what's been happening for like from a distance. And we have a thing called Bible Chat, which is a weekly Bible study. Um, during Bible Chat, a few weeks ago, um, we talked about the Trinity and talking about baptism. And when you came home, you said, well, a very interesting thing happened today. about four or five people who want to be baptized. I think it would be a good thing to do. This is not that. But I should think that this is where we trust what we talk about. This is where we talk about this God that died on the cross for us. That he will separate, he will remove that separation from us and God. And we said, well, it's a church down the road that got a baptism. We said, no, 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 I'm going to come to you. And then we got back to them. We'll, we'll, we'll get something. They got the answers to it that we could see trusted in the promises that we told them. And that's what we need to do. I don't know if it's going to be in the weeks and weeks to come. But actually, we need to trust in the promises that God gave us. That helps us walk every day. Whether that is a promise that He won't leave us or forsake us. That he will go and that his army prepared a place for us, that he died for us, that he forgives us, that he loves us. But if you believe them, you can't keep them with them. It's just like that. If you truly believe them, you need to go and share them with others. while we were still sinners he died for us not when we got it all right did he say I came to the Lord when we were still sinners anyone who's ever been a parent has probably done the thing that I do but I didn't with my kids they're too big to do it do you remember that point where you kind of barter with the child you kind of bargain 
And you say, if you do this, I will do that. So it's not that much better. I'm not sure what you're doing. So it's all that. Do you know what I mean? That bit where you go, if you pick up all your toys and put them away, then you can have ice cream. Yeah, we've all done something like that before we grew up out. God didn't do that. God said, leave your toys. I'd like you to pick them up, but it's not important. Come and get them. And I just want to encourage you to this one. Just try to read it. That's it. It changes everything. God demonstrates his own love for us. But while we were still sinners, God was still for us. It doesn't matter if you think you're 1% away from being perfect. And then nearly already got your feet in heaven, you know, your chairs with my tail with the name. Or whether you're right at the bottom, you think I'm on less than one percent, God will never accept me. That message is for the universe. And it's the same. The God loves us. Our living God loves us so much that he sent his son. He's one and only son. He died on the cross for the church of Christ. That we may accept him. Ten lives around, and we're free to heaven with 